Hi, uh, should I say who is celebrating his birthday today? <laughs> well, I'll leave our copper to do that. Well, welcome to the Masterclass, everyone. Uh, we are back. Uh, apologies about last week. We couldn't bring you the program, but we are back and we are continuing our agribusiness series. Um, it's been exciting so far. In studio with me, Emmanuel Trini, who is a professional with expertise in organic farming and agribusiness consultant, also founder or and CEO of QET Organic Farms and Consult and Sabet Agriconsult, an organization known for promoting sustainable agriculture, organic agriculture, and eco-friendly f- uh, farming practices. Emmanuel's work emphasizes the importance of environmental stewardship, sustainable agricultural techniques, and helping farmers optimize the operations for better productivity and ecological balance. He has, for the past four years, trained over 500 individuals in snail, mushroom, and vegetable farming. This is to contribute to sustainable agriculture. He took us through vegetable farming for two weeks, and he's back in the studio to take us through mushroom farming. How has your week been so far, Emmanuel? Uh, stressful. Stressful. <laughs> wow. Um, don't worry. We'll, um, this this program is going to allow you to be stressed. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's do the the formal things. Yeah. My name is Daryl Kwao. Um, um, in for your banner for this show produced by uh, Sarah Josu. Um, she's a very important personality in this organization, and she makes things happen. And in the back room, Oliver, the birthday boy. Oh, sorry, I wasn't supposed to say it just yet but i have <laughs> all right and and so um we are going to start our conversation on mushroom farming okay this program is brought to you by masterclass uh well uh wait what did i just say it's brought to you by well it's confusion when you're talking about oliver's birthday right masterclass is brought to you by well go good energy go yeah idea it's excitement guys leave me alone I'm excited about <laughs> Oliver's birthday. Okay, so Master Class brought you by Go, Go, Good Energy, Go, Yena and 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 we are going to start our conversation on, uh, on mushroom farming. But I promised a couple of weeks ago because I mean there were some questions about uh, vegetable farming that we could not answer, and I said we're going to answer them quickly before we start with this one. So um, just get your notebooks pens a cup of coffee whatever you're taking this after our coffee said it's hot so maybe uh, a glass of chilled water or something uh while we we get to the subject uh quickly a, a few people in manor wanted to uh, find out certain things about um <coughs> vegetable farming and i just thought we should just go over because it's important education for everybody so uh this one was uh, sent by ama from lab she said in the case of post harvest losses many farmers use chemicals on crops to make uh, them ripen early for sale if they stop this practice post harvest losses will reduce um is there a fair point good point yeah, very good point okay can very you very good point explain? um fruits such as um as a banana for instance you know sometimes uh, we force ripe it and these are very perishable you know commodities so if you force ripe it and within two three days you're able to sell you're able to sell then um you know it goes to waste and so it, it's very true it's very true she, she made a very good very all right point. jesse from sakumano said um insightful discussion on vegetable farming masterclass can your guests give examples of materials that can be used for mulching vegetables and organic weedy size and pesticides that can be used on the farm yes so there are plastic mulch which you can use you can use sawdust uh for mulch you can use um uh, cocoa peat as much if you have enough of them um, you could actually use um, uh, the uh, after clearing the land you know the weeds that you gather you can use that for for much as well so oh. there are a lot of uh, alternatives that you can use okay this one from uh, Joseph Ajman from committee 9 Tema, also known as Ajingo uh, said good afternoon master class it's another great topic my question is it always advisable to grow vegetables at a low land or water area it's not really advisable. Um, if you want to grow vegetable on a low land, then you should consider the topography of the of the land that you have, because um, if it's a very low land which has a steep up there, what it means is that uh, when it rains, um, erosion would take place, and if you're not careful, it would it would you know destroy the farm that you have down downstream. So it's not really 
you need to really consider the topography of the land and then the closeness to the water body i think we mentioned in the first uh master class mm -hmm. that um it shouldn't be a waterlogged area if it's a waterlogged area then you need to consider the type of vegetable or crop you want to do all right this next question from james i'm a vegetable farmer i love farming i want to go into full vegetable farming how can i how can i get help my question is is it right to use uh, normal tap tap water uh, for your farm yeah i think we mentioned it also that um tap water has some chlorine in it in there mm -hmm. and so um if you're doing if you're farming and then using it for a long time if you expose your crops to it for a very long time it has an effect on on your crops and so uh if that's the only option you have fair enough but even for commercial purpose uh the bills that you will be paying at the end of the day wouldn't make it um sustainable for you to be using on a commercial purpose unless for your home gardening that um you're not doing it for any commercial um, purposes so you can still go ahead and then use it all right so that's just about it um our whatsapp line is is active if you have any questions when we start our discussion on mushroom farming zero five five one 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 nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven is the whatsapp line to send your questions uh through to and so uh i won't begin this way i mean growing up i mean we used to see mushrooms grow on uh wood yeah and and all i just thought of it as creepy then later i found out mm -hmm. that um they are actually edible yes. then i found out that there are some that are actually poisonous yes so let's start from there okay yes yeah, so uh, like you mentioned um mushrooms they are they're a type of fungi you know there are several several species of fungi and then mushroom has to has to be one of them and then i've done that mushrooms also they're left or species mm -hmm. but then there are some that are edible like you mentioned there are others that are unedible and so um usually mushrooms come out from dead organic matter and so as you have organic matter around as they're decomposing one of the processes or one of the byproducts that they could produce is mushrooms mm -hmm. and then this also happens when um usually when there is the soil or the, the the substrate which is growing from is fertile enough to support it, its growth mm -hmm. and so any environment that allows for um fungal growth mushrooms can grow there so you realize even when you buy kinky and you keep it there for some time you start seeing some mold uh growing around it yeah, that's, that's a form of fungi also and so as far as the conditions around it surrounding it is perfect for it it will grow so how do you determine mushroom that is edible and one that is not? Okay, so that's one uh, one of the most difficult things to do, um, identifying it by eye. You know, there are some mushrooms that we thought were unedible. Later on, uh, it came out that after a lab test, it came out that they were edible. In fact, they didn't have any effects. And in fact, they had more nutritional benefits than even what we thought were edible. You know, so uh, just by eye, watching it and then saying this this is edible and this is not edible it's quite difficult to do so uh usually what i advise people is that if you're not too sure about it don't consume it hmm. if not if you are not too sure about it traditionally people will say oh um if you see a mushroom that do not ha that you do not see um house flies hovering around it it means that it's unedible however uh that is not proven scientifically and so Maybe we can use our traditional intelligence to 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 go by that and say, okay, once there are no insects around these mushrooms, once there are no uh, house flies around these um, mushrooms, once any other living organism is trying to avoid it, then probably it may be poisonous, because if it is um, if there's something that they can consume, they would have you know gone closer to it, and so maybe we can we can be using that uh, to draw some conclusions. But then, mm. like I said, it's not scientifically proven and let's take into a lab to i, I find to this pretty tizy <laughs> because if, if, if i want to go mushroom yeah and i can't tell by the eye uh, which mushroom is edible and which one is not so how do the mushroom farmers uh, determine what uh, sort of mushroom to go okay so research has um proven or research has shown some types of mushrooms that are edible and so in ghana for instance uh, what we're able to grow at the moment is oyster mushrooms um, there are other mushrooms, chaga mushrooms, lion's mane, 
um domo the the normal one that we find we find in our uh, rural areas you know when uh after palm oil tapers stopping their wine mm. you know they allow the the palm to 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 get start to start rotting and then you grow some mushrooms from it and all that others we get from uh mount we get from uh, uh mountains and all that yeah so uh it depends on um the type of mushroom we uh, are looking at but then what we are ca- currently able to grow in ghana is the oyster mushrooms and so some of these are based on the research that you are able to find out from um the research institutions from people that have worked extensively on on mushrooms and so like i said uh we can't rule out that some are uh poisonous uh but then you can also just look at it and say oh this mm. looks poisonous without any fact to prove to it talk to us about the nutritional benefits of mushrooms in fact mushrooms has a bundle of nutrients um a research i read some time last year indicated that in fact to the protein content of mushrooms that you could get from eating let's say one kilogram of mushrooms um then food chicken wouldn't be able to give you that uh, equivalence of protein and so it's very proteinaceous and also just yesterday a research i did also indicated that uh, mushrooms is able to cure cancer oh wow yes mushrooms wow. able to cure cancer diabetic patients people that has um people that has osteoporosis you know uh, bone bone diseases and all that mushrooms is able to correct some of all these deficiencies in in humans so it's one of the most nutritious uh, protein foods that nature gave us and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that our new farming methods and then our urbanization is is kind of pushing all of these some of these things away from us that you know these are things that are we're very close to us in our in our community in the villages where we live and all that but then uh, now we can't we can barely find them when you want to you want to find them unless of course um from farms and that is what is making uh, the mushroom business and the mushroom uh, industry thriving and growing because as time goes on i always tell people that as time goes on and then research is increasing research is expanding it, um there are things that uh, we thought they didn't have any value, but then when more research uh, goes into it, we realize that there is high d- there's uh, that it, it gives us more than we even thought. Mm. And then once that um, happens, it creates an opportunity for business people to invest into it because once um, our eyes are opened on that, the demand for the product becomes um, high, and so definitely it's going to create an avenue for businesses to also thrive and then do do that yeah uh, so how big is mushroom farming in ghana um to be frank i think we import over 80 percent of mushrooms we import yes in ghana wow so when you go to all the shops shopping malls or the um the supermarkets most of the mushrooms you see there are imported wow yes 80 percent or even more are imported and so um Uh, <laughs> is it the case that it's not a lucrative business? It's a very lucrative business in Ghana at the moment, and um, the demand of it, the ma- the demand for mushrooms keeps increasing. I think I mentioned it last time that you know uh, people are getting one thing COVID showed us all Ghanaians and I mean globally is about taking care of our health. Uh, taking responsibility of our own health and so now people are very conscious of what they take in and what they feed on Mm -hmm. and that is what is you know making some of these businesses businesses thrive more and the demand keeps increasing and so it's very lucrative business to do in ghana but then um the education is is um really not there in uh, enough so a lot of people I mean, are not yeah i guess people don't know the value exactly of like i'm hearing you talk about how helpful it is in yes. um helping people with cancer yes. for instance yes i mean if you have that knowledge you know that well this is something that should be uh, in high demand so people exactly. don't really know about exactly um, how lucrative it is. exactly and then um most of us or most people are also not um looking at it from a business point of view you know mm-hmm. in ghana once we talk about farming people are looking at either poultry Pigree, yeah. um, maybe some may consider vegetables, 
and then maybe a tree crop mm-hmm. and these are the these are what we know to be farming yeah in ghana and so some of these things that are uh, you know are co- i call them contemporary agriculture are coming up and then you know people are making a lot of money from it outside of the country in different countries uh, we don't really give a lot of attention to it but i think now things are changing because people are really investing uh, i've seen a couple of people are trying to who are investing heavily into mush- mushroom production to t- be able to take over uh, especially some of the imported uh, mushrooms to take over some of these markets from from uh, people who import them into our country okay so you own a mushroom farm i own a mushroom uh, farm. tell us about your, your experience um okay starting a mushroom farm okay so um i didn't start off the whole idea for starting mushroom farm wasn't really about the mushrooms it was about um solving one of our problems which it was which is um risk management from the uh, from the agric sector okay. so i realized that um most farms would burn they are wheat most farms will burn their corn cups most farms will burn um the remnants from their their farm uh, you go to the sawmill of, um the sawmill operators are burning the sawdust because they they think they have no use to them and all that and i realized that all these are contributing to the climate issues that we are talking about so i was i started off by thinking how i could make use of these products to be able to you know um, create something out of it and through that mm-hmm. I realized okay I could even I could use it to produce uh, mushrooms so I started off from thinking about climate and then it landed me into producing mushrooms and uh, so far the journey has been good because I am um, once now once you mention climate everybody gives you an attention want to listen to what you have to say and all that so going into mushroom farming uh whoever wants to go into mushroom farming it's not just about producing the food but then you are solving one of difficult and even global problems that is helping to solve the climate situation the climate change situation that we have at hand at the moment yeah so uh i started off as doing the research into it but i realized i didn't have enough experience from that end so i started buying what we call the fruiting bags or the compost bags from people that were doing uh mushrooms started off with that um and we will have what we call the cropping mm-hmm. and so we water we harvest we water and then harvest so that's what i started doing and then along the line i started producing what we call the bags myself and then now uh, uh we are even adding value to to mushrooms by producing biscuits producing teens with it uh oh, produce biscuits yes. with mushrooms yes right here in ghana yes right here in ghana oh that does inter- i mean i know of um uh, kebab kebab yeah yes i know of uh pizza yes yeah i didn't i didn't think about biscuits yeah. that's interesting yeah. I, I guess people right now weighing the options we've been talking about poultry we're talking about fish farming we've been talking about vegetable farming i mean so let's talk about the the lucrative bit of it like okay. the money aspect like how much okay. you stand to gain if you invest this amount of money in in mushroom farming i mean how much do i need to even start with okay so mushroom farming is one of the climate smart agriculture that you can venture into one it needs a very small space a very you know the space required to do mushroom farming is very small you don't need a My bigger backyard. space back here i mean your kitchen could even be your startup. Oh, kitchen. Yes, your startup can be a place where you can start your farm from. Your corridor can be a place where you can where you would be able to start your mushroom farm from. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, if you're starting from, let's say, your kitchen or your your corridor, it means you have already secured um, your housing. The only thing left for you now is to buy the fruiting bags. And the fruiting bags is four cities. So let's say I have 40 cities, I can buy 10 bags and then start my uh, mushroom farm. Describe to us what a, a, a fruiting bag is. Okay. Yeah. So the fruiting bag is, um, is uh, you know, I mentioned that there are some compo- uh, composition of components that we use to produce the mushrooms, to produce a fruiting bag. A fruiting bag is where we put the seed of the mushrooms for it to grow. And so we can, we bring together sawdust, uh, maize cups, papers, wheat bran, rice okay. husk, yes. Mm. Anything that uh, can decompose, we add it to it to produce to, and then we we do what we call composting. So we turn it over a period of time so that it starts to to uh, to decay. Then now it goes through another process where we call the sterilization, where we heat it up to kill out to kill off any other bacteria or any other microorganism that may be in there to hinder the growth of our fungi. Then we introduce 
the fine guy that's a mushroom into it and so starting up uh, starting it from the scratch i would advise that we didn't go through all that lengthy process so you get someone a farmer who produces who does all that and then you only buy the bag from the uh, from the farmer and start it up from your farm um that your corridor or your kitchen with that when you have 40 cities like i mean even f- um 20 cities it means you can get five bags 20 cities 20 cities okay you can get one f- goes to four cities yeah. yes so All you right. can get five uh, five bags to start your farm with personally i started with 100 by then uh it was sold as two cities mm-hmm. i started with 100 and then with time and now we are producing over four thousand within a week and so you can start from there and then be building up over the period now each bag of ma- um, each fruiting bag is supposed to give you a minimum of half a kilogram of mushrooms each bag is supposed to give you a minimum of half a kilogram um of mushrooms and so at the moment the buying price of um, mushrooms is 40 cities per kilo and so if you bought a bag for four cities and you're getting a half a kilo that means you're having you are getting 20 cities so you bought a product for four, four cities, cities yeah, and making it. 20 cities out of it within That's a period exactly within a period of six to eight weeks we're making this much That's from the harvesting period yes yeah, so you're going to harvest for three months continuously wow so, yes so once it's there the only thing that you need to apply to it is to give it water no fertigation no no pesticide application nothing there's nothing like vaccination nothing it's just the only um only product or the only item or the only chemical you're going to p- apply to it is water just apply water to it and it's going to fruit just like it happens in the world you know as far as it rain when it rains you're going to see mushrooms sprout from the forest some of the forest areas some areas that you could see that uh, there are a lot of um dead organic matter tree branches um leaves falling and then you know trying to uh to decay that's where you find mushrooms growing and so once it rains it rains mushrooms are going to grow from these areas and it's the same principle here when you're doing mushroom farming so as far as you put water on it it's going to sprout and then give you mushrooms okay uh, so four cities yes you're getting like 20, 20 cities yes as as what the profit you're making for as your as a revenue as a revenue so for. let's take out your let's say you buy a rubber to package it let's say one cd for the r- packaging material um you bought a bag for four cds let's say water bill goes into it for about let's say two or three cds for the period we got just one bag and then the rest becomes a profit. so you're spending less than 10 cities to get 20 cities hmm well, I, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, starting from, let's say, your kitchen, your yeah. backyard. Uh, what's it also like uh, doing uh, large-scale production? Because I visit a mushroom farm. It, it, it takes some kind of some work that's in it. Yes. So, um, I always say that um, agriculture is, is, is a game of numbers. Hmm. The bigger you do, the lesser your cost and the higher your returns. That's how agric- agric works. So, for instance, let's say if you're doing vegetables, and then if you could have two labor to work on one acre, and you can have the same two labor to work on three acres, and the output may be almost the same. Mm. But if you're doing three acres, it means that you're going to have a higher returns than someone that did one acre. So that's how agric that's how agric plays. It's kind of a it, it's an it's a numbers game. So if you're doing on a larger scale. The higher or the larger you do, the uh, lower the cost. So, for instance, if you're buying, if you're starting to say 2,000 bucks from the farmer, the person could say, okay, if you're buying 2,000 bucks, then let me give it to our three cities. That means instead of buying a four cities, you're buying a three cities. And then you're making, um, you're, 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 sitting, you're getting um, um, a discount of about 2,000 in between. Right. Yeah, so, and that comes back to add up to your revenue or to ca- come back to add up to your profit that you're going to be making and so if you are doing it on a larger scale it depends on what structures you want to do i always say that mushroom farming is a, is a sustainable agriculture and so you try as much as possible to use stuff that are just around you things that uh, are not expensive to to use so for instance bamboos you could use bamboos to make your structure um use it, uh, um, a touch um um these uh, the raffia mat as the roof for it you could use some old um iron sheets to cover it it doesn't need any sophisticated you know um um 
are structures to be able to do mushroom farming and so you don't need to kill yourself or invest so much into the structure i always tell people don't kill yourself investing so much into the structure when um what is really going to give you the revenue you haven't paid attention to it because i don't know the you need to pay more more attention to what is going to give you the revenue rather than the structure when the money comes you can now focus on the structures but then in the beginning focus on how many bags you can buy because like i said if you're buying more definitely the person will want to you know reduce the, the price for you and even your cost of transport the cost of transporting it from the farmer's farm to your end will also it's also going to reduce let's say i'm bringing it from to you from in Sawam. um you're going to you know if you are buying 100 you will still may need an aboboya or a tricycle to move it this same aboboya or tricycle will be able to carry about 500 or 600 so why not buy 500 and rather buy 100 and pay the same for transportation cost so invest more into what would be rather you know what would rather give you more revenue than what will be structured sitting down and then in the long run um you know it wouldn't it, it would take you time to even recoup yeah. that investment okay uh you're listening to the master class on joy 99.7 fm we are discussing mushroom farming we just got started talking about uh what you need to start um, a mushroom farm what you stand to benefit as revenue from uh, mushroom farming and it sounds pretty lucrative so <laughs> if you're still weighing on, on your options i think mushroom farming is uh, something you can explore especially as you mentioned that we import 80 percent of it so that that tells you that there's demand for it but yeah. that's that we are not able to produce it locally yeah. and so there's like a, a, a huge market for it if if people decide that well this is something i can also venture into we are going to continue our discussion on a man- mushroom farming uh, after this short break you can join us by sending your questions in the comments to our whatsapp line 055 1199 when we come back we'll be able to p- open the phone lines if you want to call us as well 0302216541 short break we will be right back <laughs> Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541. Or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 0551-111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Okay, welcome back uh, to the master class. Hope you're able to grab uh, some chilled water. Like Akofa mentioned, it's, it's pretty hot out there. So... Uh, welcome back to the program. Um, just so you know, the WhatsApp line is active 055-1111997, 055-1111997. If you have any questions on uh, mushroom farming, we'll take that uh, in the course of the program. Just to remind you that the masterclass is brought to you by Guel, Guel, Good Energy, Guel, Yanarayandia. Now, Good Energy brings you Guel Super XP, the ideal choice for most vehicles. It is flowing wow, wow, wow at many Guel stations in the country. Just go fuel up your vehicle and enjoy the smooth ride with all the benefits. Guel Super XP is quality and gives you the correct choice when buying regular fuel. Guel Super XP is fortified with a special additive that gives longevity to your um, engine makes your engine perform to the max using minimal fuel and it is suitable for most vehicles as you journey the road look out for Guel stations with the Guel Super XP sign and go fuel up your vehicle Guel Super XP Ufilia huh? Ube Fili Guel Good Energy Guel Yana idea. now is it back? Yes, it is. After a four-year hiatus, the Joy Sports Invitational Tournament is making its much-anticipated return, ready to ignite the passion of corporate sports enthusiasts across Ghana. From the dazzling display of corporate colors to the electrifying energy of non-stop cheering to the CEO's penalty shootout, men's football competition, women's penalty shootout, mixed 4 by 100 meter relay, basketball shooting, mixed volleyball, women's 50 meter dash, men's 100 meters, uh, mixed sack relay, 
uh, lime and spoon relays, scrabble and many more. Mark your calendars for Saturday, October 26, 2024 as the University of Ghana Stadium, Legon, will be transformed into a vibrant arena of competition and corporate pride. The Joy Sports Invitational Tournament is brought to you by Joy Sports. Joy Sports, uh, the thrill of the game. Okay, and so we are heading back into our discussion on uh, mushroom farming. I, I want us to talk about, because we don't have so much time, I want us to talk about keeping the mushroom farm. Uh, and but but first of all, I mean, how much tr- how much training do you have to undergo uh, to be able to start the mushroom farming? How important it is it to train? Okay, so um, like I mentioned, f- at the start of my journey in mushroom farming, um, I was doing a lot of research, but then I didn't have the practical understanding of how some of the things even okay. And so I needed to go back and then seek for training and seek for some uh, knowledge. And so training is is, is it's an integral part of mushroom farming. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned, you're going to deal with fungi, and so, and these are microorganisms that you're going to be dealing with. And so, you need to be able to know even what temperatures that they are, they will be able to thrive. Exactly. What um, environment will they thrive? Uh, what what composition do you need? Even the housing. Um, what do you need to put in into the housing? Um, with what you already have. That maybe you have a housing unit already that you want to use, but do we need to do some work on that housing unit that you have to be able to do it commercially? I always say if you're doing it commercially, it's different from when you're just doing it for backyard and then doing it for your kitchen and then some few family and friends. And that you don't really pay a lot of attention to some of the things. But if you want to do it as business and then grow with it, then it means that you need to you know pay attention to almost every uh, little detail. So mm. having the training is is an integral part of of starting a mushroom farm and then also uh, you need to be able to understand um even then the market dynamics also here market also comes in again uh, especially during the dry season just like uh, in the vegetable farming during the dry season mushroom prices go up the reason is that some farmers food up but then mushroom is something that you can do all year round but uh due to some reasons some farmers will either reduce production or uh, will close down completely the reason being that uh especially like a sunny day as it is today mushrooms don't want this type of um, environment and this type of temperature they want uh, mushrooms want a cold environment right uh, yeah so if the temperatures are that warm and then you're able to you know take care of the environment properly it means that you may be at a losing end and so during this period some farms may even decide to close down completely and then restart it again during the rainy season but then like i said you can do an all-year-round farming without uh, having to close down and so you need to be able to understand even that the market dynamics and then to be able to know what time is good and what time is the best for you to start all right i remember we are picking your questions on zero five five one 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 nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven ellen from hacho says good afternoon listening to your mushroom program how do i reach the consultant uh emmanuel will share his contact uh at w- when we are done with the discussion today so stay tuned for that um can we take the other one All right. Uh, this other one says, "Good afternoon. Listening to you. Okay. Okay. Please, I need your guest's number to talk to him. Of I think your hot cake. <laughs> we are going to share <laughs> the number um, at the end of the program. This one says, "Very good initiative. Please send me the contact of the resource person on mushroom farming. I'm very interested. That's uh, coming from Emmanuel. Okay. Next, next uh, message says." Good afternoon, Master Class. I started a snail farm, but they all died. Can I start the mushroom in the snail pen? I think that's a, a good question. Yeah. Yes. Um, I wouldn't advise unless for um, for Why backyard. Not? You know, the snail pens are constructed. Okay, I don't know the type of snail pens he did, but then um, the some are smaller cages, and usually they are they they are built on the floor. Now, mushrooms would want you to, you know, um, place them sideways, not, you know, sitting down. You know, Mm -hmm. you have to cut a portion of it and then be watering it. So, if it's sitting, it means that the water would get stuck on it. And then in no time, you know, you use um, sawdust and stuff to produce it. And so, in no time, it would would, uh, would deteriorate and then go bad. And so, you wouldn't want to put your mushrooms in a snail pen, which 
when you're watering it it's going to get stuck around around the bag but rather you want it to be in such a way that when you position it you put the water on it it can still the water would um it would make the surface moist mm. but can still run over okay so yeah. that's that's advice for you good afternoon master class thank you for answering our questions way back <laughs> today my question is what are some of the challenges in mushroom production like some disease outbreaks that occur in a poultry farm that's uh, joseph ajiman from uh, tama community nine also known as ajengo yeah so like i mentioned in mushroom farming there's nothing like vaccination there's nothing like disease <laughs> spread there's nothing like there's um, nothing like disease spread no what oh, really? could happen is that um uh, in the process of producing when the sterilization does not go well that is when you can have some microbial infection and that could infect the rest of the bags but once it's opened it's quite difficult for you to attract any diseases to your to your mushrooms all right uh, can we do some more uh questions i think there's just one okay so zero five five one one uh one one nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven uh this other one i think we'll do that a, a bit later now uh, I, I just want you to talk to us about um how to keep the the farm i mean what are the do's what are the don'ts okay um so in your farm one thing i should uh take note of is that always ensure that your farm has um is well ventilated to uh, it's a conducive environment the temperatures there are not too warm neither do they be too cold and so i've been to farms where they've used they use air conditions now in an air con if you're using air condition what happens is that it's going to rather take off the moisture content in the room uh in the in your farm and so at the end of the day your mushrooms will start drying up and so you rather you don't use um air conditions in uh your mushroom cropping room or your mushroom farm and so but just ensure that you have a stable let's say a stable temperature or a temperature temperatures that wouldn't allow a lot of heat within Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is one of the things that you need to really pay attention to, and then a source of water to be to be watering it on a free, on a daily basis. So one thing you have to avoid is heat. Heat, yes. Mushrooms don't like heat. They don't like heat. Once there is heat, it will start drying up on on the on the bag. Once mm -hmm. it starts sprouting, you realize that they are, they are drying up and then falling off. Okay. Yes. And then they need a constant supply of water. Yes. So ideally, you can you should water twice a day. Mm -hmm. before you harvest you water and then in the evening you water again once you do it that way almost every day you're going to have some mushrooms to harvest so aside from heat is there any other thing that could cause uh, you to lose the mushrooms heat is the only is a, is a, is a major cause all the others um and there's extreme downpour of rain where the temperatures are very cold in that case you don't even water at all mm -hmm. because the, the temperatures are already cool for it so it will grow by itself when the temperatures are very cool and then very cold and then you water again the mushrooms will absorb a lot of water and then when you harvest it will take in no time it will start um um fermenting and you don't want that to happen because once it starts fermenting it means that by the time you move it from your farm to the sub, uh, to the buyer or to the market it's already gone bad and so you don't want that situation to happen so you don't overwater it neither do you allow the place to be uh too warm yeah. okay um so i mean you successfully set up the mushroom farm you are harvesting your mushrooms now you have to think about the market for yeah. the mushrooms yeah. so i mean your farm for instance where do you send your your produce to yeah so we have some restaurants uh in airports that we sell to we have and ourselves we absorb almost about 80 percent of what we produce by processing them into like i mentioned the teens and then the um, cookies and other things that we process the mushrooms into so we dry the good thing about mushroom farming is that unlike some other ve some vegetables that you can't dry mushrooms you can dry them and preserve it so you can dry yeah i i think it's it's very important that you we brought this up because okay. usually when you have farm, you have to think about post harvest yes. losses and so i mean for how long can you keep the mushrooms okay. uh, so you don't lose them okay i mean if you're not going to add value or process yeah so in a fresh uh, in a fresh state it could be in the fridge for three to three weeks to one month and then it will still look fresh on the so other that hand that's typically the way to keep the yes mushrooms it should in be the in the fridge. fridge yes 
on the other hand also you could dry them either sun dry solar dry um oven dry any form of drying that you have uh, access to you can dry it and then that can could be there for over a year that's what happened to it and then you can you can further make it even into flour you dry you melt it into flour and that could be there for two three four years that don't happen to it uh, I'm, in- I'm interested in how you turn them into biscuits <laughs> w- what you do with them yeah so um we use the mushrooms and then a bit of cassava flour mm-hmm. and then um we use this syrup we mix it up and then we use we add some few other ingredients in there to but then the major the uh, the active ingredient in there is the mushrooms and um it comes out just like eating either a biscuit or a cookie yeah Okay, uh, I I know you you mentioned that I mean we import about eighty percent of it, and so what are the opportunities for export really? I mean, seeing that we yeah. we import eighty percent of yes. it, in fact, should anybody be thinking about exporting? Um, it's something. It's it's a product that it's a very exportable product. Let me put mm. that way. Um, somewhere before twenty twenty COVID twenty nineteen, there about uh, I had we had an order from um, UAE. Where they wanted forty feet container of um, UAE, yes, of mushrooms, dried mushrooms from Ghana. We, in, in fact, you if you combine all farmers in Ghana, there's no way we're going to be able to produce and oh, wow. supply. Yes, that's that's like some great yeah. opportunity. Oh, yes, that. yes. So it's it's a great op- it's an it's an exportable product, whether in raw state or in a processed form. It's an exportable product that we can look into it as well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, and from the look of it, it's not as stressful as other things, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, you mentioned there are no diseases to worry about. Yeah. You have to ensure that um, it, it, they are not being, if I should say, burned mm-hmm. by yeah. heat. Yeah. And you have to ensure that there's constant water supply. Yeah. And that you can do this in your back room, you can do it in your kitchen. Exactly. And, and all of that. I mean, w- what are maybe... Let's let's talk about the other challenges of mushroom farming that people should be wary about, and so that if they start, they can get ready for. Okay, so the number one challenge is the heat, and then which we've talked about. Yes, yes. and then um, the other will be um, microbial infection, especially if you want to start from the scratch and then produce your own bags. They need to be extra careful, especially with. Um, the employees you're using. Mm-hmm. Um, I've noticed or I've seen in the farm where we're doing the bags, uh, some of the guys went to town, came back, now they were going to apply, they were going to put the seed into the bags. Unfortunately, they, can, they, didn't, they didn't wash their hands. And so they carry some microbes from outside, use them to, you know, do the seeding on the bags. And then when the time was due for, for, um, for the bags to be ready, none of them was, was came out hmm. over, over five thousand bags that they produced five thousand none of them oh. total loss and that's because the simple um um analogy or the, the simple issue here was that they brought microbes from outside and then you know introduced them into the um into the bags you know this fine guy we're dealing with has undergone a lot of you know uh, multiplications and so they are not as strong as a fresh microbe you're bringing from outside. Okay. And so once any other microbe, microbe um, takes the lead in your bag or in your production process, it means that they can't, the fungi of interest which you're going to introduce wouldn't be able to compete with it for that space. And so the other microbe will take over and then you lose, you lose your investment. So you need to be, cleanliness is one thing that you can take out from mushroom farming. Cleanliness, you have to be, you have to ensure that you always have sanitizers around, especially if you're doing the bag. You're doing the bags yourself. You need to be washing a lot of washing of hands, a lot of sanitizing of hands, a lot of you okay. know keeping the place uh, clean and neat. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we are out of time, and so I want to ask you your your last words. I mean, my takeaway is, <laughs> if, if you're investing four CDs and buying the food bag, you're yeah. getting twenty CDs as revenue, and that's 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 good business, yeah. I think. Any thing you want to say finally for anybody who is interested in mushroom farming yeah so i would want to say that um the agri agri space has a lot of opportunity for a lot of people for almost everybody it can accommodate almost everybody um it has a whole lot of the chain is quite too long to Mm -hmm. accommodate all of us and so let's not focus on just poultry piggery and then the crop uh, uh the cash crops but then there are 
others that we could always look into to make a lot of you know impact and uh trust me they they make a lot of money you are um, able to make a lot of money through that with you know with less hassle as compared to the the other forms of farming so let's look into some of these things like i mentioned they're exportable product and all that so you can always look into it and then you know invest into it a lot of, a lot of people asking for your number and um, to reach you to i guess a lot of people are interested in mushroom farming and having heard what you have to say this afternoon how did they reach you um so our number is 0554 one two one one two one nine nine eight nine nine eight yes great and so that's how to reach emmanuel uh, for um some more questions if you do and that's the master class uh, thank you all for uh listening the master class brought to you by well well good energy well in india uh put show produced by sarah josu um thanks to the team at the back she has told me to say it but yeah the producer <laughs> of the program so <laughs> <laughs> and happy birthday once again to Oliver. Oliver helps us with all the social media work and the streaming. And so, speak of streaming, you can always go back to Facebook and catch um, a, a, a repeat of this uh, conversation we had on mushroom farming, just so you can get updated with the notes also on YouTube as well, I believe. Okay, that's it for the masterclass. I'm handing it back to Akofa uh, with more of ignition. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>